What's going on, everybody? This is Elder Jacoby Owens coming to you January 27th for a quick word on Wednesday. The scripture I'm going to be coming from is Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. We're going to jump down to Joshua chapter 9, and then we'll jump over to 2 Samuel chapter 21. And the scripture reads, If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. All right. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done, and we're in, cha uh, we're in Joshua now. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willily and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. And they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants, how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you, and have done this thing. And that last portion, of course, was the Gibeonites talking to Joshua. Now, before we continue any further, you know, the enemy knew the judgment that was to befall them. All right? And they figured a way to circumvent that judgment. You know, sometimes the enemy knows. Uh, sometimes the enemy knows more about God than his own children do, and that's unfortunate, right? And I say that because when we look at numbers, and it said when you swear, when you swear unto the Lord, or you make an oath, you should do everything that you swear, or or that oath that is in that oath, all right? So the Gibeonites made a league with the children of Israel because the Gibeonites were in the promised land and they knew that God had commanded Moses to destroy everything before you, wipe them out of the promised land. You know what I'm saying? And that can sound harsh, you know, when it talks about man, woman, and child. Don't even let the animals, don't even keep the animals, get rid of everything. You know what I mean? We're talking about nephilim tribes here because remember when the spies went into the land they're like oh they're like they're they're, they're so large in stature we're like grasshoppers unto them you know what i mean so we're talking about nephilim tribes as it's talked about in genesis 6 where the angels had um children with the women of earth and then they they had these these babies okay these unhuman these half-bred these hybrid children all right, that did not have the breath of life that God breathed into man in them, you know. So these w beings were what was to be wiped out of the promised land. But yet and still, these beings wanted to live. <laughs> so they came up with an idea. God's word says this. Numbers in, in, in numbers and of course they're not going to go for scripture But in numbers it says if you make an oath you swear by you to keep that oath and these are God's children These we're supposed to be his representatives on earth, right? That's what we're supposed to be as his children You know so as his representatives on earth if they make an oath to us, you know what I mean? It should be upheld You know it should be That oath should be kept we should be safe so we're going to go to him and we're going to present ourselves as one way. Even if we deceive our way into safety, we're going to do this thing. So they did it and they were successful. And they were successful because the people of God did not even seek the Lord about it. They had some suspicions. They're like, uh, how do we know y'all don't dwell amongst us? Where are you from? Oh, we're from a faraway place. Look at our wine bottles. Look at our old moldy bread. They were clever with their, with their deceit. You know, so, but there had to be some indicators to these men that they could have very well been from around them. You know, they, they may look like the people in the land. They may be great in stature. There may be some telltale signs to say, hey, these people could be from around here. 
you know. And of course, when they asked him, they gave him a, a beat around the bush response to the to the question, oh, we're from a faraway place. They never got specific, but they made a league with him. And after they made the league, they, they discovered the, the, the truth about these people. And then the, the, the Gibeonites told him, this is why we did it. We wanted to live, this, that, and the other. All right? But so here you have this Nephilim tribe who God uh, commanded to be wiped out of the promised land. Now an oath has been made amongst them, uh, uh, between the children of Israel and these, this Nephilim tribe, and that oath was to be honored. You know, because the children of Israel represented the most high God. So that word was to be honored. You know, and it's like, well, why why would God honor uh, the word between uh, these this fallen species and, and mankind? You know, why would he honor that word? Because God cannot lie. You know, God is just. He's holy, right? And we can tell that God honored his word. Because when we go down here to 2 Samuel 21, then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, it is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, said unto them, now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. And as that story continues, as that account continues, um, they didn't want silver or gold. They just wanted to slay people from Saul's house, you know, uh, as, as justification for what Saul had done to them. You know, but God honored that. And even in his honoring his word, in honoring his word, he there was punishment for when the oath was broken. When Saul broke the oath, there was punishment throughout the land, and here was the famine. You understand? So it, it reminds me of, of another scripture that says, We are made spectacles for men and angels. We are made spectacles. This is the, the greatest reality show that you can see is the life of a believer right we are made spectacles for men and angels so as the angels look on as these tribes look on as men look on they should be learning more about the most high God when they look at your life when they look at my life you know when they look at our successes and unfortunately when they look at our failures they still need to be learning more and understanding more about God right because we're made a spectacle to these to men and angels but um that's just an interesting read um that i wanted to share and of course it can go a lot further you know we could go to the scripture where it talks about the amorites height and it was like the, the height of the cedar trees you know um and and they grow upwards of 100 feet when you look that up so it's just that it was just an interesting read but um we have to keep our word as children of God, we have to keep our word. When we say we're going to do something, we have to follow through, whether it's in punishing our children, whether it's in a business uh, a agreement, whatsoever it may be, we have to honor, we have to make sure that we're honoring the word that we put forth. You know what I mean? Even if there was deceit involved, because again, there was de deceit involved with the children of Israel, the princes and Joshua, but they still had to honor that word because regardless of the deceit that was involved, we blame the victim because <laughs> they did not seek the Lord before they made this league with this nation of people, with this tribe of people. You see what I'm saying? So this prayer for the scripture has been a blessing to you as it's been a blessing to me. Remember, Monday is the Monday prayer, Tuesday is testimony, Tuesday. Have a prayer request or testimony, feel free to leave a comment below or shoot me an email at jacodio at gmail.com. And we'll pray together and I'll share your testimony. All right. Until next time, be blessed.